Hey YouTube, Bob here. Going to be taking a look at uh, Highway Star for the Famicom and its US counterpart, Rad Racer, for the Nintendo Entertainment System. A racing game uh, designed by uh, Squaresoft in 1987 and it was to uh, compete with Sega's OutRun game. And you're going to see once we get to the racing screen uh, that this game does look a lot like uh, OutRun. You have two vehicles to choose from, this red Ferrari and a yellow Formula One machine. I'm going to choose the Ferrari because I like the red car. So I'm going to hit start here, press start again. This is the map here, this is the track that you're on, and you see there are three circles on it, or three little dots. Those are your checkpoints. The whole goal here is to make it to each checkpoint within the specified amount of time. If you don't make it to any particular checkpoint, you are not going to qualify and your game will be over. So there are three checkpoints here before you get to the goal. So I'm going to hit A to start. And you also hit and hold the A button to accelerate. Left and right steers, B brakes, and uh, you hit down on the control pad to turn on some tunes. You can turn on your radio. So I'm going to do that now. Turn on some music for us. You can hear the uh, car upshifting and downshifting. Now the whole goal obviously uh, here is to avoid the cars and to maintain a balance between your speed and uh, your turning radius so that you don't uh, spin out. If you do spin out, you risk hitting uh, obstacles on either side of the course, just like I did now. You spin out, and of course that'll uh, penalize you for time. And you don't want to be penalized for time because then you might not make it to uh, the specified checkpoint uh, in time. And any time that uh, you have remaining uh, after a particular checkpoint uh, counts as kind of a bonus. Not in points, but you just have that much more time to get to the checkpoint. And you can see due to my uh, little crash out there, I did not make it to that first checkpoint. And of course, my game is over. So uh, there are several other courses, uh, but that's the basic uh, gameplay uh, mechanic uh, behind Rad Racer and Highway Star. What I want to show you now are uh, the differences, I think just the title screen is different, between Highway Star and Rad Racer. And uh, of course, given that uh, this game uses 3D on the Famicom version with its uh, 3D system, and on the NES with uh, typical anaglyphic 3D glasses, you know, the red and blue ones, uh, the way that the game displays 3D or goes into 3D mode is very different. So I'm going to show you some side-by-side -side comparisons uh, so you can see the difference there. If you haven't yet seen my unboxing video of uh, Highway Star for the Famicom and its 3D system, uh, go back and check that one out. It may uh, give you a little bit more background into what I'm talking about here with uh, the 3D. So, let's take a look side by side, Highway Star and Rad Racer. So here we have the title screen, which as far as I can tell is the first of only two differences between Highway Star and Rad Racer. The second, of course, being how the games display the 3D effect. After the title screen comes the vehicle select screen, which is also identical between games. But as a kid, I never understood what the select cursor was. And now I know. It's the letters HS for Highway Star. I guess Nintendo didn't feel the need to change that or explain what it was for the U.S. release. Before each race, you're shown a map that details the course name and where the checkpoints are. We're only going to see gameplay from the first course, so before we get to that, I'll show you a screenshot of each of the eight courses. Here are the first four, and as you'll see, some of the tracks are named after real places from around the world, while others are more vague in their description. You'll also notice that each stage introduces a new rival car. Stage 1 pits you against the VW Bug, Stage 2 the Corvette, Stage 3 the Citroen, and Stage 4 the Mercedes-Benz. Here are stages 5 through 8. This time only stage 5 has you racing in a real world locale, but each uh, course again has you racing against a unique brand name rival. Stage 5 being the Lamborghini, stage 6 the Lotus, stage 7 the Porsche, and stage 8 the Testarossa. So it's pretty cool that Nintendo was able to license legitimate auto manufacturer brand names instead of generic names or colors like uh, other racing games. Also, Square did a fantastic job of varying the look of the racetracks. There are similarities between them, but not one looks exactly like another. Now let's get to gameplay. The race starts after a few beeps, and you'll hold the A button to accelerate and tap the B button to brake. Left and right on the D-pad steer, 
The up key will give you a turbo boost once your speed exceeds 100 kilometers, and the down key on the D-pad will cycle through the four available tunes, one of which you're hearing right now. You can also choose to race in silence with only sound effects. The start button pauses, and the select button changes the graphics to 3D mode, which we'll get to in a moment. First, let's take a look at the gauge cluster. The green, yellow, and red meter is the car's tachometer. On the left is your time, which counts down as you approach a checkpoint flag. Once you pass a checkpoint flag, additional time is added so you can reach the next one. The middle gauge shows your speed in kilometers, and the one below it shows your progress along the track. S means start, and G means goal. Finally, on the right is the score, which, you know, to be honest, I never really pay attention to. So now that you know how to play, let's check out the 3D effect, which is turned on by pressing the select button at any time during a race. Unfortunately, you won't be able to see the 3D effect in this video, nor will you see a very accurate representation of what it looks like on an actual TV screen not using 3D glasses. When I went back and looked at this footage, I noticed uh, that it looks quite different uh, recorded than on an actual TV screen when you're playing. So what it will give you an idea of, though, is how differently each game displays the 3D graphics because of the way they're viewed by the player using the available technology. Japanese players got to use the Famicom's 3D system, while US players were stuck using red and blue 3D glasses. And let me tell you, there is quite a difference. The 3D visuals with the Famicom 3D system really do pop off the screen and look quite a bit like Virtual Boy or even 3DS graphics. If you can imagine layers of paper on top of each other to show depth, that's kind of what it's like. The 3D visuals are particularly impressive on the Famicom 3D system when your car clears hills because you can see the horizon rising and coming at you. Your vehicle uh, and rival cars also look like they're on top of the background. Now I use the word impressive to describe the Famicom 3D system's graphics in a comparative sense. When you compare them to the 3D-like graphics that the blue and red anaglyphic glasses produce, they are pretty impressive. When you take a look at the Famicom 3D uh, system graphics on their own merit, yeah, they're neat, but probably not worth spending the money on the 3D system, nor the time spent hooking up the peripheral, or even the uncomfortable weight on your head that you'll have to put up with uh, with the goggles on. And the weight does become noticeable after extended playtimes. Virtual Boy, anyone? And actually, as a side note, Sega's 3D glasses for the Master System are actually more comfortable, in my opinion, than Nintendo's goggles. And both of these pieces of headgear happen to be compatible with each other because they connect using a 3.5mm plug. Another thing that kind of detracts from the Famicom 3D System's visuals is the constant flickering of the active shutters in the goggles. You won't notice it after you become immersed in gameplay, but when you first start, it can be kind of distracting. So that's 3D mode in Rad Racer, or at least recorded 3D mode without glasses. It's a neat but unnecessary gimmick for an already rad game. And speaking of rad, Rad Racer was featured in the 1989 movie The Wizard, kind of as the showpiece for the Power Glove controller. It's so bad. Not Rad Racer or Highway Star, though. Both of them are great racing games, and I do encourage you to check them out if you have a chance. Thanks for watching.